Hi, I'm looking to purchase a small subcompact tractor and knowing from watching a lot of your videos, I'm choosing between a John Deere 1025R, a Massey 1723E, and a Mahindra E-Max 20S. The JD is definitely more money, but I'm leaning that way. Not sure if it's justified as far as superiority over the other brands, being there is a minimum of a $3,800 difference in price from the others, and I value your expertise, so wondering if I can get your opinion or thoughts, thank you in advance. Well, you know, we sat, what, what was that one we sat on, Chris, at the, uh, the farm show? Was that the, was that the Massey? No. Yep. <sighs> like, it looks fake. I will say, look how short these wraps are. They're great. Like the Kubota batteries probably yeah so we went to the farm show in, in louisville last february and if you can get to that show it's every february down there um most every tractor brand is down there and it was a great opportunity it's the first time i'd gone it's tough to get away um but if you can spend just a day or two there it's it's pretty cool a cool thing to do and when it's not great weather in a lot of the country most of the tractors in the subcompact class um seem legit right you weren't we weren't driving these around we weren't turning them on it was just more of a, a touch and feel and sit in it and kind of see what you think about it visually uh, type of experience there and doing so the only one that i had a um negative feeling about and this is just personal right this is just you, i mean this is not i'm not bashing people that own this but the only one that i had a, a negative feeling about was that Massey, uh, the, G the GC series there, which is a subcompact from them. I, I, it seemed like it was very, very chintzy. So, um, I mean, I don't know a, of a nicer way to put that, but I mean, we looked at all the major brands that we, that we talk about on this channel and that you, that you see out there for sale. And that was really the only one that it felt, it just did not feel nice, to be perfectly honest with you. So um, the Mahindra, I, don't really i mean a lot of them kind of blend together too you know where they don't stand out uh you got to have something special to stand out i suppose and and i still stand by the fact that in the subcompact world i i think the 1025r is hard to beat and i don't think it's the most capable so in fact i talked about that in a, in a short i did recently with the coyote cs series i'm that's just one of many i believe that will do have more capability than the john deere 1025r but i love i, I love the fit and the finish of it i love the feel of it I love the, the loader interface, um, both with the joystick and the bucket and taking the loader on and off. If you're gonna get a mower deck with it, I think the auto connect mower deck is the easiest one of all to take on and off. It doesn't mean that it's perfect all the time, but it's way easier than the others that are out there. Uh, their backhoe is super easy to take on and off as well. I just think that there's, well, they're, they're very comfortable seat, I'm, tilt steering, the list just goes on and on and on. It's got a ton of features on there and it does, it's, it's definitely a premium. It's definitely more. And when I took a year or two off from selling tractors and getting back into the market and seeing how high the new prices had got for a 1025R with a loader and a mower deck, blew my mind. I started having folks sending me quotes for 30 grand for a 1025R with a loader and a mower deck on it. And that is, incredibly hard to believe <laughs> it really is i mean it, that is the part that i have a tough time justifying uh in, in recommending that model is how insanely expensive they've gotten and if you're not using the mower deck and you're just using the loader then you're probably not taking the loader off very often either so as long as you have a quick attach bucket like it skids to your quick attach then i think one of these other brands is going to be fine you can check the specs out comparing what the loader can lift what the three point can lift you know, look at the machine weight, look at the hydraulic system on there. Um, you know, everybody talks about the service and the parts capability. We've done surveys where most of you guys, 80% of you, I think it was in the last survey we did, do your own service. You don't take it to a dealer for service. So um, if you can get the parts, even if they're shipped to you, well, then you can, you can handle service and, and basic repairs on your own. And if you need to on the random occasion, take it into a dealer to have some major service done to it, even as once a year or a warranty repair, um, Again, we did another survey recently too, and most folks go to their dealer like once a year. <laughs> so it's no big shakes if you have to go an extra half hour 
to go make that one time a year trip versus a place, the grocery store that you're going to once a week, right? Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Anyway, I, 3,800 bucks on a small tractor, that, that pays for some attachments for sure. And, and so I would have a tough time. I can give my opinion. That 1025 R is amazing. I love it. I've got two of them. I still own two of them right now. But um, if you can save a good chunk of money and get a good feel, if you can sit on that tractor, seems like it's the right one for you. If you can fit on there, you know, some of those subcompact tractors are, are a little cramped for quarters for some folks um, if you're a bigger guy too. And so that would be something that I'd encourage you to, if you can, sit on it you know, and get a good feel for it there. I'm, I'm six foot three and on the 1025 R watching back some of the videos that we've done on there. I sometimes feel like I'm hulking or hawking over it. It's, it's, uh, it, it I don't feel uncomfortable on there, but I, I think if I was much bigger than I am, I would probably be uncomfortable. So that comes into play as well. But as far as, you know, making the right decision, I, I think that is a personal thing and depends how you are going to have it set up. And again, if you're using a mower deck on there, um, one of the reasons I see the Kubota BX models, one, one of the reasons I, I, I see those damaged a lot with mower decks is because they are not that easy to take off. And folks just decide I'm not going to. And then you see the front frame of them, like where the wheels are at, bent in. We've had them come in like that too, bent in. Our wheels are broken off. Um, I actually had let, lent one out one time, a, a Kubota BX. And guess what? The mower deck didn't get, get taken off or taken off, took off. The mower deck was on there when he was using the loader and broke off the gauge wheel. The whole arm, everything had to have it re-welded. So it happens. It's a real thing. We've been through it. And the less convenient it is to take off something, the less likely you are to do it and the more likely you are to damage that said product down the road. So um, that's a big consideration. I was just on the phone actually with a buddy's friend this morning who um, I went to high school with him and his dad just bought 11 or 12 acres out in the country and he's looking for a tractor and he went to the John Deere dealer. He went to the, the Kubota dealer. His son-in-law has a coyote and, you know, he's unsure what way to go. And, and he's thinking, well, I got to mow my lawn. And I said, you know, I used to lean heavily towards an all-in-one machine. And then over time I've drifted further apart from that. You know, I, I, I understand the appeal of having an all-in-one machine, but the separation of just having a mower deck, right? When a John Deere mower deck might cost you three grand, 3,500 bucks, putting that money towards the zero turn. Maybe you have to put a little bit extra money towards the zero turn as well, but then you have your dedicated mower machine. That's just, that's what it's doing is mowing. And then you have your tractor and more and more, that's where I lean and where I go, but it is going to cost you a little bit more money. You have to have more space to store a zero turn than a mower deck, but it's going to take you less time, right? You're going to mow faster more than likely with a zero turn. Um, you're going to have no downtime as far as taking your mower deck on and off the tractor to do that kind of work. Uh, tractor work as well with it. So weigh the trade-offs. That's all I can say. I can't make the decision for you, but I think if you digest information, then if you're like me, then then maybe you find one helpful nugget out of a video and that can help. You can put that in your memory bank and help make a decision a little bit clearer and better for your needs. So anyway, on that note, if you're looking for a tractor or a tractor attachment, we would love to help you out. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Go to goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.